I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Richard Lopez, Quantrix Authority. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 326, where I'm going to show you how to do multiple overrides over time uh, from a 2D matrix to a multi-dimensional matrix in Quantrix Modeler. I came across this one at my day job, and I wanted to share it with you and help you become a Quantrix master. I have a matrix up here where I want to put in some certain part codes by a warehouse and I want to assign a new cost associated with them and I want to uh, specify a time period of when that cost will go into effect and not only do I want to do it for one item uh, but I want to do it for one item or multiple items but in this case I want to do it for one item across a varying time period so let's say in the next month or two I want it to be at 50 cents a, a for my cost and then at 60 cents and then the market's going to drop out maybe next year or something and I want it to be back down to six cents and I want to I want to see that cost going throughout my model how can I do that well I've again I've created this input matrix that helps me do this and I've created this lookup key that gives me a warehouse and a part code and that's important to me because I'm doing this at the part code level and I have a matrix that goes ahead and kind of forecasts my costs at the part code level and within this uh, matrix I have a category that has my part code in it and then I have these dimensions of year and month and I have some items down the side that are associated with cost so I have last cost here it's coming from the database uh, so if you know there's no override cost I want to go ahead and I want to use this last cost that's coming out of the system but if there is a cost that's put in here how do I get it to kind of uh, permute itself over time throughout my model and the way I'm going to do this again is just with a select statement a using as and maybe an is empty and some uh, logic that way uh, one thing to note here is that I created also another matrix uh, like I do in most of my models. It's called my timeline reference matrix. It's by year and by month, and it has kind of this concatenated key for year and month. So if I put in uh, a start month and year, I have it as a drop down, and I can say, well, I want this new cost to maybe be in 2021, let's say period, period five for right now. And so in 2021 period five uh, which is down here I would expect to see this new cost showing up once I get this working okay and to help me uh, with kind of these lookups and these arrangements of years and months I've gone ahead and given myself a year month index which is simply going hashtag year month along this timeline ref uh, if you were to look at that formula it's just again hashtag year month ref to give me the index of where this year and month fit within my timeline and then I have over here simply a lookup that's going up and pulling in that year month index from here and that's going to help me create kind of this uh, marriage between these three different matrices within Quantrix Modeler so again how am I going to get this cost from here down into here uh, again it's a simple select statement and so I would say what if cost helper I would say this is equal to sorry I'm going to put it in here I'm going to say what if cost helper one is equal to select what do I want to select I want to select my new cost right here and what do I want to look up I want to uh, the key list is my start year month index and I want to look up the month and year index that I'm on and so I do it that way I can do that because my month and year is, here is linked with month and year down here okay and then uh, that only gets me half the puzzle it only gets me to period 29 right which is specified by this so I need to also create my marriage between my warehouse and part lookup and my input component down here and the way I do that is basic linking which is using items which is warehouse part category as a category over here so linking items to categories and you can see that indeed in period 5 of 2021 now I'm showing 50 cents uh, if I were to put in a different value here and let's just say that this is for period uh, 11 of 2021 let me go down here and select that really quick then I see the 60 cents here now what I want is I want to say well go ahead and permute this 50 cents I want it to go all the way across to all of these other months 
up until it gets to month 11 and then I want it to be 60 cents kind of going forward okay so how I would do that is just a basic if statement and I would say that this is equal to what if cost helper to so I've added another item I'm just kind of stepping through it is equal to if is blank uh, what if cost helper one so if it's blank uh, let me let me do that here if the helper one is blank then go ahead and take my what if cost helper uh, two which is the one I'm on from the month previous okay otherwise give me what I have entered in what if cost helper one okay so let's talk about how that works here so because I'm here and this is not blank it's going to take uh, the override which is shown here if I'm here this formula is saying is this blank if it is which it is in this case then go ahead and take the uh, previous value which it's doing right here uh, same can be true here if I get down here to uh, this period is this blank it is not so it's going to take this one instead of taking the previous and therefore I get my 60 cents and you can see here that this is taking uh, the 60 cents because this is blank here and so it's taking the month previous so that's what I did here with this uh, little what if cost helper too and now really what I want to say is you know if if I have a what if cost helper too, go ahead and take that otherwise go ahead and take my last input cost so uh, again uh, how I write that is I simply say uh, what if cost then is equal to if is empty if if this is empty go ahead and take my last input cost otherwise go ahead and take uh, my cost helper too I believe and if I see that you'll see that indeed I'm getting my 40 cents coming here from my last cost up until I get a cost and then it's permuting that all the way through and then it's going to 60 cents one thing to note though if I go in here to period one of 2022 I would expect to see 60 cents here and I would expect this to be uh, to show and the reason why it's not showing is because uh, I have to write recursion uh, between uh, the kind of month 12 and month one Quantrix doesn't treat it like it's going from year to month like we are here in this uh, in this matrix it 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 there's no relationship between year and month here only in Quantrix it's only in my mind so what I actually have to say is in period month in period one uh, if I have an override take that override otherwise take the previous year's uh, month 12's value in what if cost helper two and put it here so again in order to make that happen I would simply go down here and I would write a formula and I would say in what if cost helper two month first again I'm using some recursion words I uh, use that with your categories I would say if is blank uh, my what if cost helper one of the month first okay then so if it's blank I want to take the what if cost helper two of the year previous for period 12 okay. otherwise I want to take my uh, what if cost helper uh, of the month first which is the month I'm on here like so if I go ahead and I hit that I believe it's got to calculate for just a second and I should see the 60 cents going forward here and indeed I do see that and that's going throughout the duration of my model just as I would want it to now if I wanted to add say uh, you know say the bottom is going to uh, drop out of this item I would go ahead and uh, put this in here and let's say we're going to do it in 20 I guess 2022 period period one why not let's see let's make sure that that recursion is working there so if I do that I would expect this to go to seven cents and then you can see that I've got seven cents being uh, permuted uh, throughout my model so that's how I would uh, go ahead and kind of do these multiple overrides uh, across time in Quantrix modeler I would use this year month index uh, I would then use a select uh, using as to make it happen it's really beautiful uh, if I had different parts I could go ahead and put them in here 
as long as you know there's kind of a, a join down here on these input components here uh, it will work every time and that's the beauty of Quantrix. If you have any question about recursion, about how I use timeline, about how I do anything in Quantrix, if you have questions about how you can become a Quantrix master, I really do hope that you'll reach out to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com and ask me those questions. And of course, I hope that you will join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by... QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.